Hello, my name's Ruth Woods from Craft School Oz. I've just returned from two weeks in Japan and feeling very inspired. Quite a few of you have asked me to share with you what I actually bought. I've made a video of what I've bought and what I think I might do with it and I hope that you'll enjoy it. It's my first time that I've visited Japan. I would do things a little bit differently but it was certainly exciting and the inspiration was great. Just the beautiful women wearing amazing clothes and the fabrics that you could get mostly made in Japan, which was really amazing. So I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. My main objective was to go and look at fabrics and craft things and clothing and be inspired by what I saw and to purchase some textiles. So this is my first time I've been. Um, I was very conservative, I thought. I was a bit worried that I was gonna go overweight, but I would have done it a little differently next time. I would have taken, I took, I didn't take too many clothes, but I would have taken even less clothes, uh, maybe a quarter of my suitcase of clothes and then three quarters filling up. This, what I've got here was half my suitcase. So I'm just gonna go through what I bought uh, where I bought them from and why, why I like them. So the first place we went to was in Tokyo and we went to the Nippori textile district, which was a whole street full of many, many shops. It said there was 90, but um, there were a lot and there, there were all different kinds of shops selling different things from accessories to leather, um, glass beads, uh, trimmings and fabric so there are a couple of favorites and easy ones to go to but if I went again I'd probably stay right in the area and really explore the shops and really we only had one morning where we explored so what I bought from there was and I as you might know if you know me and my colors I love this color um, this limey green yellow color so I bought three lots of fabrics and this was from the tomato fabric shop, which they have four of them in the Nippori district. So I bought this, it's all linen. So this and this is linen, but actually this one here, which I bought is a lovely cotton, feels like a Tana Lawn cotton, uh, really soft. All the fabrics are made in Japan, which I think is amazing. In fact, most of their things are made in Japan. You would expect little things to be made in China, but they were all made in Japan. Which was good so i bought these from the napori fabric district um, from tomato fabric shop i also bought this trimming this i bought two meters i just i don't i'm not quite sure why I, why I bought it but i just really like the colors and i bought two meters of that i'm not going to, i'm not sure what i'll do with that but that was made in india so it was a whole shop full of trimmings what else did I buy? I bought this little, I don't know why I bought it, but this little tiny pencil case, which I just liked. It was cute. It was kind of, the fabric was in like a sashiko kind of style um, fabric. It's cotton and it's, it's quite cute. So I thought that might be a nice gift for someone. Um, so that's all I bought in Tokyo. So if I did this again, I'd spend longer there and explore those shops a bit more. We then went to Aramatsu, which was a Shibori dying, um, like a, a historic town. So we had to stay there for two nights in order to go to this place because you couldn't actually stay in Aramatsu itself. So we went to Aramatsu and there was a museum, a Shibori museum. And I bought quite a few things from there. And it was worth seeing, whether you would think it was worth seeing and spending money on two nights accommodation to get there and we spent probably four or five hours once we were there you could actually do workshops but I thought the workshops that were on offer weren't quite the workshops we were interested in we did see a lady tying um, shibori fabric which I thought was quite interesting Well, I bought this scarf, which was um, just beautiful. You can see how kind of how it's been tied and dyed, but how it, the effect is just lovely. This particular little p 
piece really appealed to me. So it's just, I'm not sure what quite what these are made for. I don't think they're hankies. They might be little hand wipe things, but that was quite lovely. And I thought I might cut that up and put that into another piece of another garment, like maybe pockets or a panel down the front. These ones are just like little neckerchiefs or um, handkerchiefs. Well, I don't think they are handkerchiefs. Little, this one here, you can really see how the, the texture of how they've been tied. I don't know if you can see that, but just lovely. And this is what we saw the woman um, tying when we were watching this the demonstration. This was just a little piece of fabric that I bought like that. It's quite a loosely woven cotton piece, but I opened it today and thought how lovely it was. And I might do some additional stitching on that. So that's just like a piece like this. These were quite reasonably priced. So probably maybe five, five dollars, something like that. But these, this was much more expensive. This, this was, I think about $40. Even $40 is cheap for the work that's gone into it and um, being made in Japan. So that was really lovely to see Aramatsu. Then we headed on to Kyoto. And the thing in Kyoto I thought that was really good were the flea markets. Now there probably are flea markets in Tokyo, but we didn't go to any. But we found a flea market not far from where we were staying and the prices varied a lot. There was one guy selling a whole load of these kind of, I think that was different rolls of fabric like this. So this one here, I think was um, $10. And I didn't see many at this price at all. This is, I think, an old one. You can see there's a few holes in it, but I thought that was a good price. Um, these ones here are about $30. I'm not sure how long they are I think they're probably about 10 meters on here and obviously you would have to join your fabrics to make something now they're this width because they're used for kimonos this is a lovely soft linen um, and this is linen too so they're, they're quite lovely the other thing I bought at this market so it was a flea market um, was this kimono um, which was a man's kimono. So what I worked out was the men's kimonos are in cotton and usually blue like this or any kind of blue pattern. Um, so this was quite a nice um, cotton. It, it's quite firm and crisp. I've washed it already. So this, this is nice and you, I will, probably won't use it as a kimono. I'll probably unpick it and use the strips of fabric which will be a similar width to this and then use it in other things. I've bought kimonos before and I just I just don't wear them. Um, I've got one that I bought 25 years ago and I still wear it as a dressing gown. This one um, I think will be quite nice to stitch on and embellish. So I'll work out what I'm going to do with that later. That was $10. The ladies ones are usually made out of polyester and I didn't like those at all. They weren't my kind of thing. The older borrow jackets, which I was really hoping I could buy, um, were about 800 to 1,000 Australian dollars. So 80,000 yen to um, 100,000 yen. So very expensive and treated very precious. And I think that's, that's right, but I was disappointed that I couldn't really get one because they were so expensive. Also in Tokyo, there is an amazing shop called Nomura Textile Shop. Uh, there is a couple. There's a, a big one in the center of Tokyo, but then there's a smaller one inside one of the main arcades, uh, which was also really nice, but very small, and it was like condensed. But the big one in the main part of Tokyo was three floors, and it was packed solid full of fabric and on the top floor was all accessories and things which was just like a lolly shop so I bought several pieces of fabric from this shop so I shall just move these so you can see what I've bought this 
uh, was a piece of Liberty Tarna lawn. It was 300, um, it was 35,000 yen, so 35 dollars a meter and in Australia it, you can pay between 45 and 55 Australian dollars um, so it was a bit cheaper but the selection there was a huge selection of Liberty Tana lawn now what I thought was interesting which I didn't know I'm not I'd have to do a bit of research on this this says Liberty printed in Japan and I thought oh okay um, I didn't know where it was made. I mean, originally, I think it was made in England, but um, it's just, it's the most exquisite fabric. So I'm looking forward to making a top. I've got a few tops made in Liberty Tarnal Lawn. I've made you for sure I got a metre and a half this time. I usually run out and kind of have to squeeze the neck out thing. So this is really lovely. I bought this very dark navy denim, although I can't work out if it's black or it's navy. Very dark. I was looking for a really dark navy, but um, I was going to make myself some jeans, pants in those or something. This uh, lovely, 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 lovely fine cotton. It's I think it's double thickness, and it's really soft. And I saw lots of women in in Japan wearing tops made out of this kind of material. Um, that was that was quite cheap. I think that was about seven hundred yen. Seven. Australian dollars a meter so I shall make myself a top out of that also this lovely linen which is checked and I thought that they would make really nice pants trousers uh, and I just like it because of its unevenness so it's not like crispy straight it's just got a lovely little kind of rougher print and I like that and this one more linen to make some more trousers um, and also you could use it to make some pouches or something and use the squares to stitch in and stuff so it's got it's got a lot of options in there I bought a few little scraps and things um, that were just like a dollar in a, a little bin so I bought those just to stitch on while I was away then I bought some accessories. So I'll go through the accessories I bought. I bought some lace. This was from the a craft, an art and craft market, which was a little bit different to the flea market. So very much about art based, crafty based things made by locals, which was nice. I bought various sashiko threads um, and I bought different ones because I didn't know what they were or how to use them. I've done a little bit of sashiko but not a lot and um, so some of them are thicker some of them are thinner some of them I might dye these have been hand dyed these were from sashiko lab uh, we went to her shop and I bought those then I bought all these little things I bought a little range of sashiko threads I wish that I'd bought more of these so I, I just bought four and I should have bought 24. They were just, they're just lovely. They had amazing colours. I didn't know what to buy. So if I went again, I'd be kind of like, right, I'll buy more of those. There were lovely little brooches. These are little felt brooches and I just thought they were so cute. And um, so I bought a few of those just because I like them. And this little, this little brooch as well. Another roll of sashiko thread and that I think that had 100 meters on it and I used that while we were doing some stitching while we were away and um, that's, that, that worked out well. I bought this, this, so this is a ruler for measuring for sashiko stitching and it's a nice size, it fitted in my little pouch so I bought that while I was away and that will be really useful because it's got all the measurements on so I found that really useful. This, I've been wanting one of these for ages. I don't actually know what you call them, but it's like a marker. You run it along your fabric. It leaves an indentation and you can use that for your marking your fabric. Again, it's made in Japan. It's a nice heavyweight one. I've seen like cheap ones and I haven't liked those. And I've seen people make wooden ones and they're quite beautiful. Um, but for marking your fabric and also for opening those seams. So when you go down the seam and you want to press them open while you're sewing and you don't want to get up and use your iron that is an excellent tool I've really enjoyed using that a couple of little 
sticky tape, uh, washi tape. I thought I'd get those, I like using those. But these were quite delightful, these little buttons, which um, are fabric covered buttons all in different colors. I really like that idea. I think that will look really nice on um, a top on a garment. Um, I'll just put some of these back in here. I bought some needles, again, made in Japan. I bought a thimble. I did a sashiko online workshop and the man using it was going through thimbles and I really like the idea of this. So you basically put it on and you use this part of your hand to push the needle through as you're stitching. I haven't used it yet. I haven't felt that I needed to, but I was keen to get one. Some more sashiko threads, very pretty colors. A marker pen, a pencil. I could, they didn't have a white one, so I got a pale pink one. That works quite well. And this one as well, which was a bit unusual. Uh, you had to mark it a few times and then the mark came up through the fabric, so. I also bought this little box this is from the flea market and I just fell in love with it and then when I opened it so it's a second hand box it had these little things inside and I just kind of I was compelled to buy it so it's got a few threads in there a little another little thing to put your needles in and I liked it I just thought I could see that in my little sewing area you know as a little a nice thing to have I bought this from the leather shop in Tokyo and I, I was looking for something like this because I like to have um, threads to put pendants on. And these are all very finely cut leather and I think they were about $12, 120, uh, 1,200 yen, which I think there's 10 of these, which I thought was really good. So about a dollar each they work out to. And I can never find anything like that when I'm looking for it. So if you're thinking of going to Japan um, for craft textile stuff, um, do your research, allow yourself time. And what I would suggest is you go to somewhere, come away, have a break, have lunch, go the next day, and then think about what it is you really saw that you liked. So um, yeah, I thought I'd share that with you.